Hi there everyone, uh, Afan here again and today I wanted to continue again talking about trigonometry and a little bit more advanced trigonometry than what we are usually used to dealing with which is right angle trigonometry. So the previous video that should go up before this video is the special, uh, the special, uh, the special triangles and the unit circles. So just a tiny bit of an introduction into that so that's what should go up before this if you want to go ahead and watch that beforehand. Uh, that would be great, and if you don't want to, you just want to watch this, so that's, that's okay with me as well. So today I want to talk about principal angles and related acute angles. So, for most of our high school careers, if you're in grade 11, you're used to dealing with positive angles, and you're used to, well, positive angles, and you're used to dealing with uh, angles that are less than 90 degrees, right? Right angle trigonometry, we're used to working with angles that are less than 90 degrees. And, uh, for example, you have used sine law and cosine law where angles are higher than 90 degrees, but you're not really that comfortable. We're not that comfortable in angles that are more than 90 degrees because we just don't see that as often as we are used to working with 90 degree angles. So, again, what I mean by that is you're probably used to seeing angles. Uh, why can I not do this? Okay. You're probably used to seeing angles that, again, right here, are less than 90 degrees. This, let's say, is 45 degrees, right? You're used to seeing angles like that, right? We're not used to seeing angles that, let's say, are above uh, more, more than 90 degrees. So we're going to talk about today how we deal with angles that are above 90 degrees. And before I talk about that, if you notice, let me get my uh, laser pointer right here. If you notice, I have these letters here. I have C, I have A, I have S, I have T. So we call this the cast rule. So I just wanted to cover this really quickly. The cast rule says that all the values in this quadrant, so this is quadrant one, right? All the values in this quadrant for all the three trigonometric ratios, cosine, sine, tangent, all those values in this quadrant are positive, right? Because my angles are less than 90 degrees, all my values, cosine, tangent, and sine, are going to be positive. So this quadrant here, quadrant 2, which is S, we have that here, right? In this quadrant, the only trigonometric ratio that will be positive is sine, okay? So cosine and tangent are going to be negative, so my values for those should be negative. My angle will be a positive, like whatever angle that is, above 90, 120, whatever the angle is, that is positive, but the actual values for the ratios will be negative. So cosine and tangent in this quadrant right here will be negative because only sine is positive. Thus, we have S there. So if you use that intuitively, we have T here. Well, what trigonometric ratio will be positive in here? Well, tangent because we have T, right? Cast rule. So the last quadrant, quadrant 4 here, the only trigonometric ratio that will be positive here will be cosine. So that is the cast rule simply. So C, A, S, so all the values in here, all the trigonometric ratios here are negative except cosine. All of the trigonometric ratios are positive. Only sine is positive, everything else is negative. Only tan is positive, everything else is negative. All right. And why do we have that? Why is cosine positive here? Why is all of them positive here? Why is sine positive? Well, it's because of the x and y axis. All right. Remember we said x axis is equal to cosine and y axis is equal to sine. So both my x and y are positive in this area, right? So that's why all of my trigonometric ratios are positive, because all of the numbers here are positive. Here, my x-axis is negative, right? I'm in the negative region, but my uh, y-axis is still positive. And if you remember uh, our unit circle, that sine is just y over hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is always positive, but the y here is positive, so only sine is positive, but my x is negative here. So my cosine and my tangent will be negative here, but my sine is positive. Here, my y-axis and my x-axis is negative, so tangent is positive. And here, my x-axis is negative, I mean my x-axis is positive, but my y-axis is negative. So, cosine is uh, positive here. So, okay, it'll become more, more apparent as we move on. Right now it's a little bit confusing, I know, but I just wanted to tell you about the cast rule. Right now all you need to know is that the cast rule just tells us which values are positive in which quadrant. Everything else will come along as we go ahead. Okay. So let's say you had an angle that was like this, okay? And let me just go ahead and pick a color for that. Okay, let's say you had an angle theta right here, all right? And let's say that is 120 degrees. Uh, maybe I shouldn't put that there. 
yeah, angle theta is equal to 120 degrees. So again, we're used to dealing with angles that are less than 90 degrees, right? What do we do when we have an angle that is 120 degrees? But before we move on, the name for this angle, the big angle here, 120 degrees, we call that the principal angle. So this angle right here is what we call the principal angle, right? So you might ask, well, how do I solve for cosine 120 degrees. I don't know what that is, right? Well, yes, we don't know what cosine 120 degrees is, but if you're clever, we have a technique for finding what the cosine of 120 degrees is. Take a look at this angle right here. All right, let's call this beta. Okay, so if that angle theta was 120 degrees, what should this angle right here be? Well, remember that a full 180 degrees is just from this uh, this axis to, okay, let me just use this. So 180 is this entire region here, right? So if angle theta is 120 degrees, and that's my principal angle, and angle beta is called my related acute angle, that's what we call it, okay? What would this angle here really be? If this is 120, this is actually just 60 degrees, because the entire region here is 180 degrees. So beta is equal to 60 degrees right here. So let me just go ahead and draw that in. And this is called the related acute angle, all right? So this is basically all there is to principal and related acute angles. So if you have a huge angle, which is usually more than 90 degrees, that is my principal angle, so that's the big angle. And the small angle that I can relate to everything else, that is called my beta, so my related acute angle. So you can see that, I hope, yeah, you, can, you guys can see it that. So again, how do I solve for cosine of, let me just change the color again. How do I solve for cosine of 120? That is my question, all right? Well, how do I solve for that? The trick is, I don't. I don't solve for cosine of 120 degrees. Guess what? I solve for cosine of 60 degrees. And I will use that technique to solve this right here. Look, so... I'm not going to solve for cosine of 120 degrees because, hey, I don't know what that is. But cosine of 60 degrees, I do know what that is. And you'll see how I can use that to find cosine of 120 degrees, okay? So cosine of 60 degrees, if you remember, is actually part of our unit circle. Or, uh, my bad, is cosine of 60 degrees is one of our special angle ratios. So cosine of 60 degrees, if I just pull that up, is actually one half. All right? There we go. Sorry I had to pull that up. I can never remember my uh, special triangles. I always derive them on the fly. So uh, here we go. Okay, so cosine of 60 degrees is half. So what would cosine of 120 degrees be? Well, cosine of 120 degrees would be, let me change the color again, negative one half. And you might be asking, why is it negative one half? Well, because remember, uh, my cast rule, right? Cosine is positive here, all of them are positive here, and only sine is positive in this region, right? So if sine is positive in this region, cosine of 120 degrees, which is in the second quadrant, has to be negative, right? And cosine of 60 was a half because that's positive, but we're looking for cosine of 120. That's my final goal here, right? So cosine of 120 is just negative one half because cosine of 60 is a half. So the way we find huge angles like 120 degrees, 150 degrees, or maybe even 225 degrees, the way we find it is we find the related acute angle, all right? So we have our principal angle, right? The principal angle is right here, if you take a look at it, right? 120. We find the related acute angle. So to find the related acute angle in this quadrant, all we did was 180 minus 60, or 180 minus 120, right? Because that's what this angle has to be for this entire thing to be 180. So the way, again, we find principal, uh, we find ratios for principal angles, like cosine 120, is first we find the related acute angle, so in this case it was 60 degrees, and then we solve for the related acute angle, because we can solve for acute angles, right? We know how to solve for cosine 60, cosine 50, cosine 45. We don't know how to solve for cosine 125, 130, but we do know how to solve for the related acute angles. So what we do is we solve for the related acute angle right here, and then we just say that cosine 120 is negative one half. So first you solve for the related acute angle, so whatever the related acute angle is, in this case it was 60 degrees. Then we just take that answer and we apply it to the principal angle. And we have to make sure where the principal angle is, right? So in this case it was in the second quadrant and only sine is positive here, so cosine of 120 has to be negative one half because again 
cosine is negative in this region, right? So we say cosine of 120 is negative 1 half. So cosine of 60 is half because that's my related acute angle, but I'm looking for the ratio of the principal angle, then cosine of 120 degrees is just negative 1 half because, well, it's in the second quadrant. Only sine is positive in this quadrant. Okay, so what if we had a principal angle of 225 degrees and I wanted to find what sine of 225 degrees was. So this again is one of those questions that I don't know what sine of 225 degrees is and I can't just plug in sine of 225 into my calculator. Well, I mean you can, but it's not as, uh, it's not as efficient and you don't understand what's going on, right? How is your calculator doing sine of 225 degrees? I don't, I've never seen a right angle uh, triangle with 225 degrees in there. Yeah, so you're correct. It's not possible to just compute that. What your calculator does is it finds the related acute angle. So watch here, okay? So I'm gonna take out my, uh, let's say, let's take out green. So my principal angle is 225, right? And again, I don't know how to solve for 225, but I can solve for the related acute angle. And the related acute angle is just gonna be this right here. So this I'm gonna call beta again. Again, one thing you might notice from the previous question is that the related acute angle always starts from the x-axis, okay? So last time we had a related acute angle that was somewhere here, like it was 125 degrees, whatever it was, and the related acute angle was like that, right there. And this time, the principal angle is 225 degrees, right? Again, I'm gonna start from the x-axis, and my related acute angle will be this. So always start from the x-axis, okay? So the related acute angle is actually beta right here. So beta, if you notice, is actually a acute angle, right? I can go ahead and compute acute angles because I know how to do that. I don't know how to solve for principal angles, but I can do compute, uh, I can do uh, acute angles, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. So how do I get beta, right? If this is 225 degrees, what is beta? Well, we know that this little bit here, right? This bit here is 180 degrees. So if this is 225, all I have to do is 225 minus 180. So 225 minus 180. I'll actually post the formulas for how to get related acute angles and how to get principal angles. I'll post those formulas in the next video maybe. But right now, just try to understand it intuitively. So 225 minus 180 is 45 degrees. So again, I don't know how to do sine of 225, but guess what? I can do sine of 45 degrees. So, sine of 45 degrees, if you remember, that is again one of our special and uh, special triangle values. So sine of 45 is square root of two over two, if I'm not mistaken, hopefully I'm not mistaken. So square root of two over two. So if sine of 45 is square root of two over two, then sine of 225, well try and guess what that is. Well, again, the related acute angle and the principal angle always have the same ratios, but the signs sometimes differ, right? So remember our cast rule? Our cast rule says that C, A, S, T. So what's positive in this region here? Only tangent is positive, right? So sine of 225 then will be negative square root of 2 over 2 because only tangent is positive in this region, and uh, sine and cosine are negative in this region. So tangent is only positive in this region. All right, so hopefully this helped, and you kind of know how to deal with principal angles and related acute angles right now. And uh, again, principal angles are huge angles that maybe we don't, we can't solve for. But remember, if we can't solve for the principal angle, we can't solve for the related acute angle. And that's actually my answer. My related acute angle in this case was sine of 45 degrees, which was square root of two over two. So the answer was actually square root of two over two, but the sign differed because again, I have to remember my cast rule. So if you can intuitively understand this, you'll be good with trigonometry in this, uh, in this region, like in this new region that we're dealing with more uh, angles more than 90 degrees. If you can understand, these concepts, then you should be good. So again, if you have a huge principal angle, then find the related acute angle. And well, how do I find the related acute angle? Well, start from your x-axis, right? So in this case, the related acute angle will be this. Always start from the x-axis and then do whatever you have to do. Let me just do one last example. Let's say you had, uh, let me just switch to, uh, let me switch to pink. Let's say you had a related, uh, Let's say you had a line there, right? And the entire 
angle was like 320 degrees, all right? Well, I don't know how to compute for 320 degrees, but I can go ahead and find my related acute angle. Again, start from the x-axis, so my related acute angle would be this. And the entire thing is 360, so I'd just do 360 minus 320, and I would have my related acute angle. All right, so if you're solving for huge angles, always find the related acute angle. And to find the related acute angle, we'll just start from the x-axis and then compute it that way. And remember that a straight line is 180, uh, a straight line plus 90 is 270, and then an entire circle is 360. If you can remember that, this should not be too hard. Again, you can't compute for huge angles, but you can compute for those small angles that we know how to deal with. Okay, so hopefully this video helped. Again, I'll maybe uh, next video I'll use the formulas that how you actually find the uh, related acute angles, but you don't really need a formula if you intuitively understand what's going on. Again, hopefully that helped, and please post any comments that you have or any uh, questions you may have. We'll try to address them. Thank you again.